You probably just saw the Ruby Frankie arrest footage. That was a tough watch. It's tough to watch somebody do something so horrible and sit there and stick their nose up like everybody else is the problem. Now, I like to get my information from Court TV. It's it's my personal favorite. No, no, hey, we do love long crime too, but I love me some Vinny Politan. And if you remember, Vinny has talked about cases before with bad parents because he himself is a parent. And I don't think he likes what's going on. Through the decades of my coverage of stories across the country, there was a pattern I noticed for years that really bothered me. This man be getting mad at me. He was a former prosecutor, okay? And he said, really bothered me. I'm like, say what you chest, Vinny. And the attitude towards parents who harm their children versus strangers who harm children. We dislike both. Like, we would punish we, it, was like, it was like we almost cut a break to parents when they would do the same thing that a stranger did. Like, when a stranger does it, it's worse than a parent doing it to their child. And I think it's upside down. In cases when we see a stranger did something to somebody else's child, we're like, what a monster. This is terrible. We can fathom this because in society, we are taught that there are dangerous people out there and we need to protect our children. We're not really taught as a society that there are parents out there that are dangerous parents. It's not really drilled into us. So when we get to cases like this with Ruby Frankie, it's almost unfathomable. That's that's what I feel like he's saying. And, and I kind of get that. We should be going harder on Ruby Frankie. And, and I believe parents who harm their children in whatever way should be punished more harshly than the creepy stranger. Yes, bro. But it's been the opposite. Okay. Not just in the way they're treated by the court system, but like the way people talk about it. Almost as if like you bring a child into the world, you can do whatever you want with the child. That's what she no. was saying. Yeah, that's right. No. And I think we're starting to see things change. I think that the tide is starting to turn. And I think society and the courts are starting to understand. Ruby Frankie, smiling, happy, mm -hmm. had a great life. Really had a great life. God, and I, I talk about this all the time. This is one of my biggest things, bro. If I had it all, I have this beautiful mansion with this nice view. You saw the house they were in a minute ago. They're living lavish lifestyles, you know? Ruby's hair is done. The kids are dressed. Everything's nice. I would simply shut the fuck up and take care of my kids. I feel like it should be harder to be a bad mom. Like, how can you make that choice over and over and over again to neglect, manipulate, uh, ignore, abuse your children? Is that not harder? Is that easy for some people? Beautiful kids, husband, raising, oh, I mean, just just a house full of energy. And and she showed the world and brought the family to all of us on her 8 passengers uh, YouTube channel, which had millions of subscribers, millions and millions of views. And, and there she is with the stripes on. But that's where she and should be. And her hair is still curled. And, and after you see what I'm going to show you tonight, and we're going to go into even greater detail next week on Monday. Um, we've got new videos. Over the next couple of minutes, I think Vinny is going to comb through all of the evidence that was recently released by the Utah Police Department and give us an overview of everything. So if you're not caught up on everything about the Ruby Frankie case, this is the video to watch. Now, if you guys normally watch my channel on shows like Sinister, I go through all the research. I tell you everything A to Z, but this time I'm taking Vinny as my trusted source and I'm just here to be on the journey with you. I'm watching this in real time and finding out all of this the same time that you are. It begins here with one of her children who somehow got the energy to escape the house and go to see a neighbor to get some level of help. This is a neighbor who has no idea what's happening next door. Look at his legs. Look at this child's legs. And you'll be able to hear uh, did they come out? what happens when he goes to the next house and someone answers the door. Oh my God, do you know how disheartening it is to see the child finally decide to escape because he needed food i can't fucking believe it and finally getting out and knocking on a door and nobody answers i'm glad he at least tried another house because hi how is this wondering if you could do two favors great boy well what are they uh, taking me to the nearest police station 
I know that this footage is really hard to watch, not to be corny. I have a little, okay, I have a little, like, you know, a little, little teary-eyed, but I want you to focus on the fact that the children had been rescued. I want you to focus on the fact that Ruby is sitting in jail right now and going through the court system. And I want you to think about how brave this kid is because it wasn't just for him. It was for his siblings as well. But I do recognize it is definitely hard to watch. Oh, he's do you want to cry already? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am, bro. The bravery of that little guy. Mm-hmm to bust out of that house, whatever he had to do to get out. And he knew he needed help. Get me to a police station. So that neighbor, all of a sudden, it's clicking. This, this, have a seat, son. And of course he calls 911. I am gonna cry! Tell me exactly what's happened. I just had a 12-year-old boy show up here at my front door asking for help. And he's a... Uh, said he had just came from a neighbor's house and we know there's been problems at this neighbor's house. He's emaciated, he's got tape around his legs, he's hungry and he's thirsty. He has duct tape around each ankle. Yeah, there's sores around him. I think the a good chance he's been uh, also oh, and he has been around his ankles. I mean, his wrists as well. Okay, this boy has been... <laughs> Can you imagine the neighbor's shock? Because sometimes we have a, a, a conscious, an unconscious bias about, oh, this person looks safe. Oh, they look put together. Can you imagine this man's shock when he found out the mother that was abusing this boy was Ruby Frankie? with her makeup on and her hair done and her freshly bleached hair. He probably said, this isn't what monsters are supposed to look like, but here she is in the flesh. Fucking bitch. Hey, right. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I'll take more. Hey, Thank you. Want me to? Yeah. I don't want to They can't believe what, what they're finding here. So now um, police have entered the house that the child came out of because there was information that he's not the only one. So police enter oh the house. Oh my God. And then find a child in the closet. And again, I'll prepare you for more, more heartbreak here. Let's take a look. You come along, buddy. Uh, I, I'm a police officer. Are you going for the union here? Hey, you okay? Is this just you in here? I'm Sergeant Tobler. What's your name? I just have one. Where's your sister at? Contact one. You okay? Huh? You doing okay? You don't want to talk to me? Yeah, that's okay. I gotta give you another silver lining. Hold on, am I? <clears throat> Whatever, sorry. This is all over the news. All over the news. What does that mean? It means <laughs> that it's probably playing in the jails. So guess who is seeing this footage? Ruby's new friends, Ruby's new roommates, Ruby's new cellmates. And my God, do they wish that they were not in jail right now? And do they wish that they were with their children? And they're gonna see how Ruby Frankie treated her children. And you know, those people in jail, they don't like people that abuse children because many of them were abused themselves as children. Many of them would give anything to be with their children and not in jail and treat them right. And <laughs> Ruby's coming home. A little bit of gin pop justice, okay? I mean, it's being handled best as it can by the court systems, but also, of course, there's a lot of damage done to the children by the person that they were supposed to trust the most. Here's Jody Hildebrandt being arrested. She's taken into custody. That one, we will be watching the full Jody Hildebrandt arrest video because Jody talks. Jody talks, and quite frankly, she's surprised that she's being arrested. This is inexplicable. Like skin and bones, you're, you're, you're emaciated. Like who does that to a child? The one thing we do wrong sometimes is we feed them too much, right? Oh, you're getting skinny. You, you need some more meat on those bones. Who does that to a child? And here's mom getting arrested for it. This, this makes no sense. 
Yeah, I want to see Obviously. what the dad has to say. Now, let's take a listen to Jody Hildebrandt's police interview. Hmm. I'm a little nervous. I'm going to be honest with you, if I was sitting over there, I'd be a little nervous too. So don't, don't worry about it. We're just here to talk to your side. And right now, we're just asking him. Does she throw just Ruby under the bus? I can only live here, that kind of thing. The watch she made detective movies. <laughs> There's a lot of questions we have that we just maybe have misunderstandings that we just need to clarify. And I know, and I'd love to tell you if he were here, because I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with what I say, you know? I, I watched, I'm a psychologist. I've watched people flip things all the time. <laughs> so I get it. I, I, I sit on your side. I get it. I wish people didn't do that, but they do. You could tell she's not used to being on that side of the table. She's used to being in charge, yeah. telling yeah. people what to do. Yeah. Well, at this moment, that's when she has lost all control over her future and the rest of her life. Now, this one is even stranger. And this is Ruby Frankie's police interview. Let, let's see a little watch, bit of it again. Watch how she reacts in this moment, in this situation. We're just here to talk to you about kind of a few things involving your kids. So first, are you, do you live down here or? I have an honest question do you guys think that like when the police arrived is there a chance at all that she took something to calm her down or is she really so righteous that she's able to turn everything off and give this reaction because i've seen so many interrogations where the moment they say uh we're here to talk about your kids and they know what they did to their kids there's a breath a something a repositioning Nothing. Do you want to talk to me about where you live or how many kids you have? To me, this level of righteousness, I had mentioned before that I thought I kind of saw it in the Lori Vallow case, is most people when they're in this scenario, the police are the authority, right? Like you're in trouble and there's people above you that are now going to assess how in trouble you are. There's a power dynamic and you've kind of been put below. However, with these religious fanatics, sometimes they think none of you matter. It's me and God, and I'm right up there with God. We're looking down on you guys. This is ridiculous. That you have no power here. None of this matters. And and so sometimes they can really pull from that righteousness and believe that it's true. They they think that they're on par with God judging everyone below them. So we just spoke with your husband, and he said you guys have six kids. Are those all together? Are those all your kids? Wow. Hmm. That's bizarre. Cold. That's bizarre. But I mean, I, I think she realizes what's happening at this moment. Like, like the curtain's been pulled back. We've seen what's been happening behind closed doors to these young children. Now, Kevin Frankie, her husband, the children's father, who was kind of pushed out of their lives a little bit uh, uh, by Jody Hildebrand. Uh, okay, I haven't seen the interrogations yet. Um, I'm very curious what it means that he was pushed out of the children's lives because if I knew that I was married to this fucking freak, and the children were being abused physically, mentally, anything of that nature, I would be fighting for my kids. I would be fighting. There's no way that I would stand down. There's none. Let's take a look at his reaction in this moment in his interview. A 12 to 13 year old scared. boy was knocking on doors in a neighborhood asking for food and water. That he was severely That's emaciated. That's your son! That Sorry. Was That's skinny, scrawny, That's your son. Uh, malnutritioned, not enough food, not enough water. Sir, have you not seen your kids? Like, never mind protecting them from the beast, the monster. Visit your children. You are here. You are able-bodied. Get up. Sustain life. So he had, I'm sorry, what? He had duct tape on his extremities, on his hands, on his ankles, and those were covering rope burns that were used to tie him down. And boom. Take a second 
and think about what I just said. That's the condition. I don't think he knew, but this is his fucking fault. Your son. Excuse me. I won't say this is his fault. I don't think he knew, but he's just as culpable. Okay, that's what I mean. Trying to be, you know, a little more. Understanding. Well, given that information, her son was taken to the hospital. A warrant has been applied and granted by the Department of Child and Family Services to remove both Russell and Eve from your wife's care. So no one right now is going to have access to these two children based on their physical condition. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you, would you condone that behavior? Would I condone that behavior? Um, you did. That's my job. My job is to find out your knowledge of the treatment of these, these They're based precious on this children. No. I bet, again, I don't know the details or I don't know, mm -hmm. but as you described that, that sounds horrible, horrible, disgusting. No human being should be treated like that. Joining us by phone tonight from Salt Lake City, whistleblower for Boy Scouts child abuse scandal and former hmm? client of Jody Hildebrand, <gasps> Adam Steed. Joining I gotta us. hear Adam, that. Thank you for joining us tonight. And this has just been a really traumatic day for me because it's just so surreal seeing this manifestation of abuse. The, the, the thing is, jo Jody Hildebrand is, um, I mean, like I, I they're going to show the clip of him again after the first responders got there. So I'm going to leave full screen for a second so you guys can hear the call, but we don't show it for a minute. Like I, I have from an inside source that she built that that room with the safe on the video because she was saying that she was trying to st stay safe for me, for me hurting her. What? And she tortured little children in there. She's just totally pathological like Ted Bundy. You, you just got this situation where people automatically assume that Kevin's a terrible parent. I don't know what kind of parent he is, but uh, there's lots of speculation. And the speculation is what Jody used to destroy my life with. She was a master of manipulating Oh my God. It. She worked in the courts. Oh, I got probably it. Got I got to see Jody's arrest. I got to see who we're dealing with. I, I did a video on this a couple months ago that was on my second channel, but that one was just like a random scandal that I found about Jody. But hey, you know what? That's the thing. People that are manipulative and controlling and life ruining and, and liars, they get away with it for a very long time. This isn't like, you know, a fraud or like scammers that are like forging signatures and checks and doing stuff, which those people take forever to catch anyways. And there's a paper trail. With manipulators, there's no paper trail. Just people, trails of people that are too scared to talk because they were glad they got out, they got away from that person, and they don't want to get roped back in. And I get it. What are your thoughts about Ruby Frankie? And, and well, first, like in the police interview, she is just like sitting there, like almost trance, like not responding to questions, just blinking her eyes a little bit. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts about what her state of mind was through all of this flying grotto bows thank you for always being so respectful about those kind of things i don't know if you were here 30 minutes ago but i was knocking on i was saying i would have been knocking on the door called her a bitch about eight times and said that if it were me i would have shot the taser as soon as the door cracked open i don't know thank you jody when she was trying to build her empire to the next level of therapy she would try to get people that were sociopathic right under her so they could follow her directions exactly the way that, that they could learn her language and mm -hmm. her techniques and follow them exactly. If children are left for long periods of time and places, like let's say, I mean, that's kind of this scenario. Let's say that you had a babysitter and your parent didn't have a whole lot of money and they could only afford like $20 for a babysitter. So you end up getting kind of a crappy babysitter and that babysitter doesn't really play with you and doesn't do anything with you. And now Monday through Friday for eight hours or 10 hours a day, you're sitting in a single place. Maybe it's a playpen, but really in this scenario, this child was sitting in a closet for hours and hours and hours at a time with absolutely no stimulation. 
If this happens to you in your formative years, when you're two, three, four, five, six years old, you're going to end up turning into an adult that will just stop for like periods of time and, and probably almost do absolutely nothing. This, this affects you. This lack of stimulation for hours and hours and hours at a time, it's, it's neglect and it doesn't, it doesn't go away easily. And that's what these kids were, that's what was happening to them. No love, no stimulation, no care, no touch absolutely touch starved in fact the only time that they were probably touched most of the time was to be bound or to be physically assaulted in some capacity the nervous system of these kids is it's 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 going to be shot aggravated child abuse a second degree felony guilty to count three aggravated child abuse a second degree that felony. hit her ego guilty to count five aggravated child abuse. A the most expression I have seen from her, and granted, of course, this is after the arrest and lots of thinking. This is, you know, weeks and weeks later. The most expression I've seen from this woman so far is when she has to say guilty to enter the plea. She has to say it. And it's such a hit to her ego that she has to say that she's wrong. You can see it all over her face. To count five, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. Guilty. And to count six, aggravated child abuse, a second degree felony. With my deepest regret. Shut up. And sorrow for my family and my children. Guilty. The court finds that the factual basis is sufficient. All of the terms of the agreement are stipulated, including that the court obtain a pre-sentence investigation report, correct? Correct. There won't be any argument about whether prison is the appropriate sentence, and there's an agreement about uh, the four counts running consecutive. That is correct. All right. The court finds then that Ms. Frankie's pleas are made knowingly and voluntarily. The court therefore accepts and enters those pleas. And then this is the sentencing of uh, Ruby Frankie. My choice to believe and behave this paranoia culminated into criminal activity for which I stand before you today ready to take accountability. She's taking accountability uh, one to 15 years for each of the four aggravated child abuse charges. These count. Wait, mom influencer sentencing one to 15 years for each of the four aggravated child abuse charges. One to 15. Let's do 15 for four. Not going to happen, but a girl can dream. Each count to be cons served consecutively. Okay, that's good because it doesn't mean they're being served at the same time. They're stacked on top of each other. Time in prison to be determined by the State Department of Adult Probation and Parole. So I think they've got a lot of flexibility in when they can let one or the other out here. And I'm just afraid they're going to let them out early. But does the time fit the crime? Let's bring in our think tank joining us tonight in New York City. Think tank. Senior. If you're new here, this is just a little segment on Court TV where they bring in different attorneys that are different personalities and they ask them pretty direct questions. Sometimes they have people that have been on big celebrity cases. Sometimes there's just a lot of reoccurring faces that we like. But it's interesting to hear from them because look, here's the thing, guys. I'm not an attorney. I, 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 I just like to watch this stuff just as well as you do. When you watch my channel, I basically explain anything to you in layman's terms. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not an attorney. Everything you're going to get from me is pretty layman terms and pretty easy to understand. But we let them do all the nitty gritty. Let's hear what they have to say. Does the time fit the crime here? And are these two actually going to serve some real meaningful time? Okay. Or is this State Department of Adult Probation and Parole going to say, oh, they're such nice inmates. Let's let them go. Well, they were charged as aggressively as they could have been in this case. And okay. aggravated child abuse is a second degree felony. You know, they were sentenced to serve it consecutively. I think the parole board's going to take a serious look at this case. In my experience with them, I think both of these women are going to do a considerable amount of time. Give okay. me a ballpark so I can, that'll either make me feel better or make me feel worse tonight. Oh, they're gonna show. They're gonna show. The, they're gonna show her son again. Hold on. I'm gonna full screen just so we don't see it, but you can still hear it. I don't think they're doing less than ten. <laughs> That's not making me feel to, better, Bernard yeah. Villalona. <laughs> if they're getting out in like 10, 15 years, does this time fit the crime of what we're seeing tonight? Not at all. I think 
look, look, look at that video, Vinny. Vinny, look at that video. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this little boy, how he looks. And, I'm, and, and it's just so heartbreaking. That video that we saw earlier on tonight when he go and knocks on a neighbor and even the neighbor breaks down crying when he's trying to explain this. That is the normal reaction of any human being. So in terms of a sentence I know of you can't one right to now. 15 years for the horrible now I can act switch that it back. these kids suffered, I don't think it's enough, Ben. It's not enough. What I am hoping, because what happens is when they are up for parole, is that there's a moment where the public can speak. There's a moment where they can actually Ooh. listen to the sentencing minutes where um, those affected can actually speak at the parole board and be like, these are the reasons why these two women shouldn't be released. And, I'm and she's right. They might need public voices for that because, you know, even though the kids, if it's like five years, eight years, the kids are not going to be 18 yet. And on top of that, they might be too scared to speak out against their mother. They might also just want to be done with it. Sometimes when we go through abuse with people like this that are physically abusive, mentally abusive, when you get out and you get away from them, you just want to wash your hands clean and walk away. So she's right. They really might need public voices and public support. Obviously, additional time is not going to take back what happened to these kids, but a strong message needs to be sent that yeah. these acts should not go unaccounted for. That's another thing too. Ruby Frankie needs to be made an example out of. She really does. I've spoken out before about mom influencers and people that employ their kids on YouTube channels. Not only these fuckers that are not censoring their children's faces and point posting their faces everywhere, quite frankly, for files okay that's what's happening online that's when you put your kids online you are at very very high risk of that okay very high risk but there's also people that think they own their kids that they, they, their kid is an employee okay it's happening behind the scenes all the time ruby frankie needs to not only be made an example of in her punishment but also in her humiliation because that's what these people thrive off of people thinking that they're a good parent and they're a good mom and da -da 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 -da. no honestly they bring back public humiliation okay ruby needs to be made an example of